Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60 and these hexagon tiles. This is from a Facebook question and I did a mess of my earlier workflows overthinking things and now I have back down to more simple workflow. Remember people are lazy so if you're redesigning things in most cases they are like not really overworking geometry. I suspect this is how the geometry is made. You can see you can tile them in any direction, rotate them around. Uh, you can make like I've a straight line here. I can make a close loop. You can make like this opening out. I, there's one tiling I haven't done. That's the S tiling. If I rotate this around uh, 60 degrees to the right, we will get a shape like this. And then you go back and back and back. You can make like an S going up. That's basically just tiling them uh, with this always uh, vertical. And stuff like that yeah, interesting shape let's have a look at the reference image this here and i'm gonna just remove of if sorry remove the stuff i had drawn here so we can start over i need to do thinking sometimes this is the reference image the person asking a question posted and um, that's very important if you have a question about geometry you can post your model that's that's nice but if you can somehow show a real world object of what you're trying to create it makes things a lot easier because sometimes we by mistake ask very uh, specific questions and not seeing the end result makes it a bit hard to give uh, good answers anyway let's have a look at this we can see a couple of things for this image and if i'm looking totally correctly this looks like a dimension so i suspect uh, the person in question want the dimension to be 200 from center point to here and by symmetry from hexagons, we know if the distance from center point to a vertex is 200, that means the side is 200 and this is 200 because hexagons are six equilateral triangles. So this side here is also 200. If this side is 200, uh, I will later, I will take a middle here, uh, I want to use the, what I like to call the height distance, that's the distance from a flat side to a flat side, not the diagonal. And uh, these are the double hive of equilateral triangle. That means that the distance from the flat side to flat side is the side multiplied by the square root of three. I will use that later with the side. Now I'm simply going to remove this stuff. Let's have a look. So we have like we have an hexagon shape. That's very basic. We have some. Uh, I like to call them ridges. I suppose this is a top ridge this one is straight so the tool i'm thinking of is extrude the second one i'm gonna make it blue is the one over here that's also rich that is a revolved around this point here and a, a bit more thinking you go back to my model i'm gonna hide everything except one like that uh, because we're tiling these in all direction, we want to be able to tile them. That means that this profile of, I would say face first of all, but in Fusion think of us as profiles. These and this and the rest of the six faces or profiles out here must be the same. They must be similar or we can't tile them in all directions. So, wait a minute. That means, uh, let's do it yellow. This face here and this face here needs to be the same and then keep on thinking this is extrude shape here so this profile needs to be extruded this profile needs to be revolved and they are the same there is no part of this design where the profiles are in the same place but they are close to the same place so go back to green this profile here i'm going to extrude you can see there's a symmetry you have the same arc shaped over here and these two faces are the same so I really only need to sketch half of this profile. This profile goes all out to this corner. So I suspect I need to sketch this profile here. The second profile, the blue one, is turned to blue. We have a blue profile over here, but we are going to revolve this. That means that the same profile, <coughs> sorry, uh, morning voice, uh, will exist, exist here in the middle here. So you can see now, uh, switch over to right, uh, we have two profiles in the same place or on the same plane. So we can sketch both profiles here and then do the extrude 
extrude the green one in this direction as I talked earlier about square root of 3 multiplied by the side length and we can revolve I will that can just simply add the arrows here we can revolve this blue profile here and this uh, due to be hexagon is 120 degrees or 60 degrees in each direction so I think we have got all the geometry done so let's all about diffusion we can have a look at this once again here you can see we have like the extruded shape these are two flat faces we have a revolved shape and the thing i forget to talk about is this of course a valley or a low point in this design let's do it make it purple that's the low arc we have here so you can see i'm not designing that arc in any way that arc is the result of the interaction between this extrude and this revolve so i don't need to sketch it or do anything with it and it's really not a flat thing. It's if you really look at it, you can notice that it starts here, and then as it moves up here, of course, it moves higher up from the back side of the tile. So this is not a flat. This is a 3D curve. So this is how I assume this is designed. It might be something totally different. Let's start a new design. Step one: save a file. I will not save it now because I'm just doing this for a video. But always start by saving. That means you will not lose your progress. I'm going to right click, uh, create new component. I'm going to create component because I want to use joints and tile up these tiles. So I'm just going to call this tile like that. Get a new component, expand the browser, makes it easier to see things. And uh, let's have a look at the design. I'm going to say design in the same way here, looking from the top. So I place the tiles on the ground basically. Uh, but the profiles, of course, are perpendicular to this, so I need to sketch this from the front. Create a sketch, make it on the front. I'm going to start with a polygon, circum sky polygon. I'm going to make it a construction lines because this is mostly for reference and a bit easier to see things. I do not put any dimension right now. I'm going to make it like this. I'm going to make this horizontal. And now I add the dimension from the picture here. If you can hardly see it, I will remove some. It says 200 here, so let's do that. I'm going to hit D for dimension from here to here. The important thing, I want to use this dimension later in the design. It's going to click here. So I want to name it. So I'm just going to make it hex side. So as I said earlier, you can dimension it from the center point to the vertex, or you can dimension the side is the same thing. Hex side is going to be 200. And the uh, sketch auto scales correctly. So we have a little dimension. We can move it slightly out of the way. I made it to the left because I will sketch the profile to the right. That's just for visibility. We're going to start with a line. We need to close the profile so we can figure this. This is the back side, not construction, normal line over to here. This is the back side of our design. So I'm going to move this dimension below and it's easier to see. I'm going to make a line. So the first part I will make here now is the center ridge. So that's going to be a high one. This line here is a part of the ridge here. So that's a line up to the top here. The second line I'm going to make, uh, if we have a look at it, look at the front. You can see it's a bit here. Let's switch over to orthographic. This here is a high ridge and that needs to be if you think about the profile rotating around here this length of this is the same as the vertex to center that means that this needs to be in the middle of its ridge so i'm going to make a line and that's going to start from the midpoint of this line I'm going to go up see if i can get the perpendicular yes and as i'm doing here i'm going to switch over to construction line make a line over to here until fusion this is supposed to be horizontal that's an easy way of making these two lines the same length. I could use equal or something else, but it makes it easy. I'm going to use the construction lines later. Not this one, but the second one. Uh, I need one more line. Line, this is not going to be a construction line now. Out here, this is the low side or the edge of everything. And then I'm going to make a line, construction line, straight over to here. This is just to help me do some tangent constraints. We can now start adding more dimension. D for dimension. This here is going to be like the lowest height of the edge. Let's do that uh, 8 millimeters. I think that's decent uh, height of the base of a tile. And now I can dimension between these two lines. So this will be the difference from the 
the what you would see as the surface of the tile up to the highest point or highest ridge. Let's make that 10 millimeters for now. So we have this. Now we're going to use arcs. I have switch over to this oh look i used these did these shapes doing arcs you can do splines or other thing but your splines you need to make sure all the splines are the same or we won't line up i think arcs are more simple and i suspect we have used arc s on the keyboard arc i r c to find the command i'm going to do three point arcs I'm going to start for arcs. I'm going to start with the center the one I'm going to extrude it starts up here and it goes down here click on that you can see now I'm going to turn it from construction to normal line. If I am close with the cursor to this point here and move close lines, you can see the tangent constraint pops up. So I'm going to click there so I don't need to do the tangent constraint myself. I still have an arc command active, so I'm going to keep on sketching arcs from here. This is the top of a revolved shape of a richer that. From here, it's going to go down to here. And then I move until I find the tangent constraint and then the last part is going to go from up here out to here move it down find the tangent constraint and for some reason i don't know why fusion doesn't like to make candy constraints of it so let's move it down a bit sometimes fusion gets a bit naughty and i add it behind tangent between here and the line and there it is fusion can sometimes be confused there are too many lines around and by that we have sketch everything on the hyper dimensions now so we like two profiles we have these here these are a revolt profile and we have this profile but we're going to extrude so we're going to finish sketch we're going to do an extrude i like to start with that one of these two here these two profiles and it's going to be symmetric it's going to be the full length of things and we're going to use our parameter we did learn the hex side and as I said, to get this to the correct length, you're going to multiply it by the square, uh, square root, SQRT, of 3. That's going to end up to the edges of our little uh, hexagon. So now we need to do the revolve, S on the keyboard, find revolve, or you have it up here. It's up to you how you find your command. Revolve, the blue one, solid. Profiles, we're going to select this profile now i done this design earlier so i don't know how this will pop up now because normally if you do this you're gonna up up with a full revolve and that's what not what i want to do we want to make an angle you want to make it symmetric you can change that here make it symmetric we want to make it 60 degrees that means it's going to make 60 in one direction and 60 in the other that's total of 120 and that's the angle of the outer size of a hexagon and i'm going to do a join not a cut and we hit ok i'm going to hide the sketches we have like made most of our body s on the keyboard and let's find mirror command mirror we want to mirror a body yes and the mirror plane is going to be you can select the plane or simply the face of the body and fusion will automatically jump our operation to join because the bodies are touching so we're going to hit ok we can now open up our browser and have a look. We have a fully defined sketch and we have one single body within the component. So that's correct. Uh, we're going to do a chamfer. We can do it from a menu just for fun of it. Chamfer. Uh, there are 12 edges to select. There are a couple of different ways to do that. I'm simply going to click around. There are only 12 of them. Uh, all the 12 edges. This is most probably for manufacturing. I'm going to make that one millimeter. Oh, that's too small for this size. Two millimeters. Hit OK. And with that, we have a nice little tile here. So I'm going to move up to my uh, top of the browser. And we have now done a component. So how can we tile things? Well, step number one, uh, be a bit careful there's a thing like here in select that's called component drag that means you can take a component and drag it around you get this warning about uh, position is moved it's going to revert the position if you don't by mistake want to avoid by mistake moving components around unselect component drag that's step number one number two this tile here is the one i don't want to move so i'm going to right click tell fusion to ground it like that you are grounded I'm going to close this because it otherwise you just 
get too much messy on the screen. So if we have one component, I need a one to one. Another one. I'm gonna click here. Control C, Control V will ask me to make a copy of it. I will copy the full component. That means if I do any changes to the first component, rest of them will update. Hit OK. So now we have two components overlapping, so we can't see them. What I will do, I will do joints. So let's say we want to tile this upwards. So I'm going to do joint. I want to make a joint on this face. I like to use the center point here. If you have, and you can see I can move it around. If we want uh, Fusion to snap to the points, hold down control. And you see it now doesn't really touch your face. It jumps between the snap points. And I want to use the one in the middle here. I'm going to turn around my model and find one up here. You can see it moves over. I hit OK. Uh, once again, Control C, Control V, hit OK. I will make one more joint so I can tile free in this direction. So I have that. Now we can start having fun. So let's do like that. I'm let's do the S thing on one side. So I make a joint once again. Joint on uh, this face and where are you? There you are. Hit OK. Uh, it's good. Make another copy. Okay, you, you can use rectangular patterns and stuff, but I still like to add the joints so I know things will not fly around. That will touch up here. Do OK. You can see you get this interesting, I know, it's interesting, very simple arc S shape here. They're going to be straight here. Of course, we can do other shapes. We could do a bit of twisting if I do this face and this face like that. I get them to turn on the outside. We should most probably be able to make a circle too. Let's do that. That's another one. Uh, we are supposed to see how I'm going to place this now. I'm going to make a joint between uh, this face here. That's one and uh, oops, sorry, oh, I'm over zooming here like that. Gonna hit okay, uh, but doing that, we made a circle, or we can make like the uh, let's uh, make all of these uh, visible. You can also make like these shapes here and other versions. So, with this quite simple tile, you can do a lot of things that will make people with OCD totally panic. Because you can make patterns that are regular, but not really following a pattern. So, with that said, I hope you find something in this video useful. Take care, see you around, and...